Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about reintroducing tape to the disaster recovery process. In our last video, we talked about reintroducing it to the backup process. It also can play a role in disaster recovery. So it, I have drawn up here several classes of applications, a tier one app, mission critical, got to be up and running. If there's a disaster, even in the DR site, I got to be up very, very quickly. A tier two application, important to the business. Uh, if there's a disaster, I've got to be up and running at the DR site within a few hours, so it's still pretty critical. Uh, then a tier three application, probably an application that gets used daily, but not something that uh, has to be up instantaneously and the business won't just absolutely shut down if it's not available. And then finally, I have file data here or unstructured data. Um, and then all of this is, of course, happening at our production uh, facility. And then, in my, then I have a DR site right here, which is basically, at this point anyways, empty. So let's talk about how we would protect each one of these. Since Tier 1 applications have to come up and running almost instantly, we're probably going to be using some sort of synchronous or asynchronous replication directly into the DR site. More than likely, there's, applic there's application servers uh, sitting there running, ready to go. Uh, and so this is a uh, replication job and, and probably not an area where uh, tape plays a, a big role. But as far as a total data set, uh, this is generally speaking about 10% or less of the total data within the data center. So it's actually a relatively small amount. Now let's talk about tier two applications. Typically, all of these three classes of applications are going to go through their normal backup process and count on the normal backup process for disaster recovery. So as we explained again in that last video, uh, that means they're probably backing up to disk. Uh, and then that also means that we're replicating to another backup disk uh, in the DR site. So in, a, in the event of a disaster, we're going to actually recover here. In the, the replicated copy, the apps are accessing essentially native versions of the data. There is no real recovery process as far as data movement is concerned. Here I've got to move it off of the backup disk onto some production uh, data or some production storage. So for tier two applications, in many cases, what I'm going to use is a feature that's pretty common today in backup applications called recovery in place. So what that means is I'll have servers sitting here idle or quick shipped in, and they will directly access their data for the time being directly off of the uh, backup copy. Now that brings some negatives to it. Obviously the backup disk isn't necessarily designed to, for high performance, but I am able to get the application up and running. Uh, probably at some point I will uh, move this data to a more production class uh, storage array uh, and I'll, I may take some outage, uh, frankly, to, to make that happen. Uh, so that's the tier one applications, or I'm sorry, tier two applications uh, taken care of right there. Now tier three applications, I'm probably not going to go through all of this process to recover. I will probably uh, have some more servers shipped in and another array and then directly recover those uh, to that array off of the backup disk. And then the backup, uh, the uh, standby servers will start accessing data directly. So that way I don't need to worry about the fail, failover and moving data around. It's just a one-time deal. So in, in many cases, my goal here is to have about a typically like a four hour uh, RPO, RTO with this data and typically uh, a four to eight hour RPO, RTO uh, with the uh, tier three applications. Now, in file data, clearly there's a, a chunk of file data that probably has to come back pretty quickly uh, and that'll probably happen as part of this tier two recovery. But there's a, a vast amount of data, uh, probably 90% of it, that does not need to be recovered right away. Also, if you look at the time frame on this tier three application set of four to eight hours, that's something that tape could easily meet. So if we look at that, what we could do is 
either, again, in our last video, we showed data spooling off to tape. Those tapes could be shipped to the DR site. So in this scenario, I could actually start my tier three and my unstructured data recovery all from tape. So tier three and files could all come from tape. Now the advantage of doing that is I've just reduced the cost of my uh, backup disk at my DR site substantially. Uh, so probably I need about uh, 20% of the total disk backup capacity that I would have if I was going to try to stage everything from, from disk. And so what we're suggesting here is obviously for tier one mission critical applications, continue to use replication. For your tier two applications, continue to send those to backup disk. Use the recovery in place feature so you can hit these uh, tight RPOs. But for tier three and tier and, and file data, Go ahead and use tape. Tape is very easily transported. It can land right there. And then we can do the recoveries directly from tape to storage at the DR site and comfortably hit that four to eight hour window. The, the result of doing this is, is several. Number one, we reduce the cost of backup storage both in the primary location and in the secondary location. We reduce networking costs substantially so because we're not transmitting as much over it so we can dedicate the bandwidth for other purposes and then we make that data diversity or genetic diversity in media more practical because all, everything goes to tape so I've got a copy on disk and tape I ship it via tape and when I go to recover over here in this four to eight hour window I can easily hit those parameters uh, and what you'll find in many cases is because of the amount of data that needs to be recovered here, the performance can actually over time become better than it is on disk because of the, um, the speed that tape gets once it gets to a certain standpoint. The final advantage is really an advantage of power and cooling. If I can reduce my spinning disk capacity by at least 80%, tape only uses power when I'm actually writing to the tape. Uh, so the, the cost to store that data for a long period of time, both in my DR site and on premise, uh, is dramatically reduced. And so one of the biggest challenges we see today in data centers, if it's not a square footage issue, it's a power and cooling issue. And so using tape in this fashion uh, really reduces that. And it's important that we kind of look at that because not only are we reducing costs, we're reducing data center footprint, and we're reducing power and cooling requirements, we're not sacrificing any recovery effort. We're still going to hit our you know, really fast sub one hour recovery times here. We're still going to hit our pretty fast four hour or less recovery times for our tier two applications. And we're comfortably going to hit our four to eight hour recovery times with tape. So again, we, we suggest using a blended strategy of tape and disk in both backup and also in disaster recovery. Thanks for joining me. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst for Storage Switzerland.